All right. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. And I will rejoice. And be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, we should rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, oh, oh. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, God bless you. Again, we're coming to you with the word of the Lord. Amen. We're going to take a look at the book of Luke. Amen. The book of Luke in the sixth chapter. Get your Bible. We'll be adding other scriptures, but primarily we'll be in the book of Luke in the sixth chapter in the New Testament. The third book of the New Testament Gospel, the 42nd book of the Bible, the book of Luke, the sixth chapter. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, this is the day, yeah, this is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made, we shall rejoice. Hallelujah! We shall rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, oh this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hey, hey, Lord. Hallelujah. That the Lord has. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Most Heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus, it's again another time we come to give your name the praise and the glory and the honor that shall be thine. God, as we endeavor to go into your word, God, help us to let your word get in us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thine sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Touch every man listening right now, every woman listening right now, every soul in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit prevail. Bind the devil that comes to rob, that comes to kill, that comes to destroy. And God, have your way right now in the name of Jesus. Anoint me for the task. Amen. Not my will, God, but thine will. Hallelujah. That it might be done. That thy kingdom comes within our soul and our spirit that we understand what you want us to give us the strength that we need even now. Hallelujah. Touch, heal, and deliver. Set free, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Move from the natural into the spiritual. Amen. Hallelujah. Let your spirit prevail. Come into this place right now. Come into everybody that's here. In the name of Jesus, bind Satan. Satan, we bind you. Hallelujah. We come against you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let everybody say amen. Amen. The book of Luke. Amen. The 43rd book of the gospel. The 42nd book of the gospel, rather. And the 6th chapter. The book of Luke. It'll sound almost like the book of Matthew. Uh, how many verses in that scripture I forgot? Uh, 49. 49? All right, we're just going to uh, deal with some of it. Uh, start from the beginning, brother, for me. Yes, sir. Book of Luke. On Sabbath, when they one Sabbath, Jesus is going through the grain the grain field. Mm -hmm. And his disciples began to take some heads, the heads of grain, uh -huh. rub them in their hands, and eat the con the con. Mm -hmm. right. That was the first verse. That's the first. All right, they're letting you know that Jesus and his disciples were walking through, Amen, some grain fields, and he began to eat right on the Sabbath. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And uh, go ahead, verse two. Two. Some other Pharisees asked, mm -hmm. "Why are you doing what is unlawful?" On the Sabbath. Why are you doing what's unlawful on the Now they're asking the Lord. <laughs> Why are you doing what's unlawful on the Sabbath? Go ahead. Three. Jesus answered them. Have you never read what David did when he, when him, when he and his companions were hungry? Mm -hmm. 
before he entered the house of God uh -huh. and taken the, the consecrated bread. Now notice right here that Jesus took them back to the law. He wasn't even, according to them, he went to none of their school, right? He went, he, he didn't learn from none of their teachers, right? But yet he told them about what happened in the law. Praise the Lord. He told them, and then I'm, I'm believing he's about to tell them that he's the Lord of the Sabbath. Go ahead. Yeah, he's talking still about David, right? Mm -hmm. Eating what, what was only lawful for the priest to eat, right? Right. Go ahead. He also gave some to his companions. And those that were with him, his soldiers that were with him, he made sure they ate too. Right. Go ahead. Five. Then Jesus says to them, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. All right, he, Jesus told them, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. In other words, it wouldn't be no Sabbath if it, it wasn't for me. I'm over the Sabbath. The Sabbath is not over me. You understand what I'm saying? Because later on, he taught them that uh, man was made, and the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. You understand? So they asked him, is it unlawful for to do anything uh, good? He's like, why wouldn't you do something good? Uh, it was a separated time to give man and humanity rest. But if your ox fell in the ditch, your neighbor's ox fell in the ditch, or if you saw an opportunity to help somebody, you don't use that as an as a <laughs> as an excuse to say, I'm not going to help you. You understand what I'm saying? You, you're supposed to do the godly thing, but it was really talked about on the Sabbath day was a selfish thing. Take time from yourself and give time to God. So if you're helping your neighbor, praise the Lord, that's different from working. Praise the Lord. But if your neighbor's in trouble and your neighbor comes knocking at the door, you know, even though it's the Sabbath, you say, what's, what's the problem, right? And if you can help them, you're doing, what the, you're doing what the Lord would want you to do. Because that's what the Lord is. For God so loved the world that he gave, what, his only begotten son? That whosoever would believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Go ahead, brother. Six. On another Sabbath, mm -hmm. he went into the synagogue. Okay. They, they, on another. Now, they paying attention to him. On another Sabbath. Go ahead. He went into the synagogue. And was teaching. Uh-huh. And the man was were, uh, the man was there whose right hand was what, shriveled. Okay. Um, the, phar the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to... Okay. okay they, now they're looking for something to go against Jesus. On. Instead of just, you know, this is this is. You ever notice that when you come to the Lord, or if you if you tell somebody something about the Lord right away, they're looking for a reason why you need to shut your mouth. When they don't want to hear nothing about the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? Now it's all right if they tell you, but if you tell them, they're looking for a reason. For you to not even say nothing. Don't tell me nothing about the Lord. And then hold it. We got to be careful that we're not that way also. Because we all can point the finger at one another and say, well, she did this, he did that. Da, da. See, there's a difference between the gospel and the gossip. And I think that's why everybody thinks they can preach. Because they think that the preacher is just pointing the finger. But the preacher is not just pointing the finger. It's not she did this, he did that, you did that, da, 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 da. No, it's about whatever you're doing that's outside of God is to point them to Jesus Christ to bring them up out of their sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's a difference from gossip with saying you did something and telling you what you did without giving you a healing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Gossip is to crucify you. Gospel is to let you know that Jesus was crucified for you. And though you in that dilemma, though you're in that sin, though you're in that lifestyle, Jesus can save you. You understand what I'm saying? But a lot of people, they, they got the message wrong because they sitting and they, they listening with the wrong mind. You ever notice somebody hear what you say, but they what what when they interpret what you say, you're like, that's not what I said. And you say, well, if that's what I said, that's not what I meant. You understand what I'm saying? Because people know how to chop up your words and put what they want there, put their own interpretation. You ever dealt with that? You know what I mean? Not hearing exactly or understanding exactly what you're saying. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, brother. So they watch him closely to see if he will heal on the Sabbath. All right, now they're watching. Now they, they're not worried about whether the man get healed or not. They're just worried about whether Jesus is going to heal him. Ain't that something? Go ahead. Wow. But Jesus knew what they were thinking. Knew what the, Jesus knew what they were thinking. He knows what we're thinking. Praise the Lord. And said to the man with the swivel hand, mm -hmm. get up and stand. In front of everyone. Mm -hmm. So he got up 
All right, Jesus, even though he knew what they were thinking, he knew they was going to have a problem with him, but since he came to do the will of God, he told the man with the shriveled hand, get up in front of everybody. Huh? Go ahead. Now, when Jesus says to them, I ask you, which is, which is lawful on the Sabbath? Mm -hmm. Do good or to do evil? All right, now, you see what I'm saying? What is lawful, to do good or to do evil? Go ahead. To save life or to destroy it. To save a life or to destroy a life. Go ahead. He looked around at them all mm -hmm. and then said to the man, stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand. He looked at him and said, stretch out your hand. Go ahead. He did so. Mm -hmm. And his hand was completely restored. His hand was completely restored. Listen, the same, I think we read it in Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, the same, right? Today, yesterday, and forever. I'm still, listen, I still believe in the miracle power of Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm not believing that that was some metaphor. His arm really wasn't shriveled up. No, no, no. I believe just what the book said. Now, somebody else can take it on a metaphor. I can understand that. They can take it as an allegory. They can take it as uh, this, meant that. I can understand all that. But I'm still believing that Jesus, amen, actually healed. Come on, sir. Anybody believe that with me? Because if you can believe that Jesus healed then, then you can believe that he can heal you right now. And not somebody else heal you. Whatever my condition is, whatever your condition is, you can believe God right now. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Amen. I'm a, I'm a Christ believer. Amen. It doesn't matter what it looks like, what it sounds like. It, it, when I say it doesn't matter to me, beyond what it may look like, I believe Christ. Beyond what it may sound like, I believe Christ. Because gossiping, why? You can say, well, I'm human. But beyond the human, I believe in the in the, the, the miraculous power of God. I believe in the supernatural. Can you can I get a witness? Yeah, I'm only I'm only a human being. I should save this for my clothing, but I hope I got another clothes. I, I I'm only a human being. I'm only a man that feel inspired to talk about God. So when I talk about God, somebody can look for my my improclivities and my idiosyncrasies and my faults and my failures and my I didn't dot the I and I didn't cross the T. Well, yes, I'm human. I was born of a father and a mother. I was born in sin and shaping in iniquity. But I heard the message that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I, I, my ears somehow magnetized and was drawn to that message. Praise the Lord. I didn't just get here today. Amen. But I made my mind up a long time ago. Lord, this should be my clothes. I hope I got another clothes. But, but I just feel like going this way. And, and, and I, this is what I want to tell you. People are going to look at you. They're not going to see the Christ in you because they don't want to see the Christ in you. But then on the other hand, they may see the Christ in you, but the devil will not allow them to talk about the Christ in you. They only can talk about you. But you got to push on. Can I get a witness? Because your master, if you allow Jesus to be the master, if you allow Jesus to be your savior, if you allow Jesus to be your king, your king, and your Lord and Lord, look how they are, 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 are looking at Jesus and putting him under the microscope. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is nothing that we are not going through. But I'd rather go under the microscope for Jesus than under the microscope just for myself. Can I get a witness? Go ahead, brother. 11, we're in uh, the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 11. Go ahead. But they were furious. Woo, they were angry. God help me in the name of Jesus. They began to discuss with one another what they might do to Jesus. Uh-oh. Now, hold it. What did Jesus do wrong? Because you don't look at it. I've had people tell me, oh, you must have did something. You had to say something. Because they have a problem with what you say anyway. It's not that what you're saying is hurting them. It's, it's to bring them to Jesus. But because they can't get along with what you're saying in Jesus. So they say, yeah, I understand why that person wanted to go upside your head. I understand why they're going to kill you because you're talking about Jesus. What? They want to do something to Jesus for telling them what's right? For telling them, asking them a question to appeal into their mind. Is it right to do wrong or right on the Sabbath day or any day. Is it is it you 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 mad because I healed somebody? Lord God. Is somebody somebody better know that Satan is in the world. 
praise the Lord, in Revelation chapter 12, when you go to Revelation chapter 12, it talks about Satan getting kicked out of heaven. Praise the Lord. Even I think in this book of Luke right here, in the 10th chapter, I believe, if I didn't make no mistake, it says, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from the sky. Some people saying that represent our president. Why didn't none of the other presidents represent him? Why, why wasn't Lucifer and the other presidents? I'm just saying that because somebody will break it down and say, well, you know, Barack Obama in the Greek, in the Hebrew, named this, and he was the light bulb. I'm not saying I'm, I'm for politics, period. But I'm just asking the question, why that particular man? All the others was, was sinning and doing wrong. They put this man in, 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 in uh, I, I, it seems like I'm going out of time, but I'm just showing you. It goes with the script. Because when I thought about Luke chapter 10, when they say I beheld the, um, Satan as lightning falling from the sky, people are saying that's Barack. I don't know whether it is or not. I'm not saying I even agree with it. But I'm just saying, why haven't y'all said the same thing when Bush was killing and tearing up stuff? I'm not against him. The president, I respect every president. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying, out of all the things you said, you hear people say, oh, I used, I worked under Barack. I had to quit. You mean you worked under the other presidents and didn't quit? You you quitting under him? And something make me scratch my head. Something don't sound right. Amen? But Satan, in the minds of the individual, because you can't see Satan unless God allow you to see him. You can't see God unless God open your eye. So you got to see the evil in people which would be the devil, in, invisible, but the evil is visible. The good is visible, but the God is invisible until you learn to see it. And I said, Satan hates. And when he gets into the mind of, of, of any individual, could be me, could be you, anyone, when he gets into the mind, he's against God. He's an opposer. Opposer. I'm going to oppose God. And, and nothing. What did Jesus do that was wrong? Go ahead, verse 11. 12. Yeah. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray. All right, Jesus prayed, and this is what you and I are going to have to do. Mm -hmm. Of course we pray. I know you say we pray. Brothers and sisters, we're going to have to pray like we never prayed before. Listen, 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 listen to me. Just Don't just listen to my word, but hear my words in the name of Jesus. You're going to have to ask God to allow you to step out of the natural into the spirit. We're talking about being born again. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's more than just your flesh. I, I don't know what you experience. I don't know what you experience. But my job is to push you into the spirit, to, to motivate you into the spirit, to usher you into the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Y'all excuse me for a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is more than uh, the top of our head to the sole of our feet, the 266, I mean 206 bones that said in our body, 54 in our hands or 52 in our feet or 54 in our feet and 52. Half of our, of our bones in our bodies in our hands. I mean, we got some nurses in here, right? Praise the Lord. Am I right? Praise the Lord. But it's supposed to be, <laughs> actually, somebody say close. You know, so, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But it's about 260, 206 bones in the body. Praise the Lord. Amen. So now, but we, we're not talking about God is not flesh and bone. Huh? God came in flesh. Amen. To walk with man, to walk with us, to talk with us, to, to take upon our sins, to take upon our problem. Can I get a witness? Yes. Took it to the cross. And look what they're doing. They're talking against the Lord, talking against him. He did nothing. The God sent us an answer. We talk about wars and rumors of war. They're looking for an answer. It's not in the mission. It's not in who's going to be president. Come on, can I get a witness? It's not in legislation. It's not in the executive. It's not in the judicial branches of government. It's in the name of Jesus. For God has given him a name that's above everything. Well, I'm not the brightest card in the deck, but I, I studied. I looked at some of the things that they say. I don't see no other answer. You tell me if you found an answer. I, I, I'm almost sick of folk telling me how bad things are, but don't tell you what to answer. See, that's like gossip. You this. You a hypocrite. You a homo. You this. You a lie. You this. Okay, well, what's the answer for the homo? Jesus Christ. What's the answer for the liar? Jesus Christ. What's the answer for the gangbangers and the genocide? It's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the answer for everybody. But they don't want Jesus because they want to act like they have the answer. So, so, so my team, my state, 
my city, my country, my family can have, look like they got the answer and we can be better than you. No, the imperialism of the world, the larger country, eating on a smaller country, has been the problem from the beginning of time. The rich eating up on the poor, you know, the, the stronger beating up on the weaker. Can I get a witness? But Jesus said, amen, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Then he said before that, Satan, I think that's in John 10 and 10, Satan comes to rob. The devil comes but to rob, to kill and destroy. Some people call them devils. Some people call them dragon. Some people call them Satan. But in the book of uh, Revelation 12, chapter, they call them all that, that dragon, that Satan, that devil. He's all the evil that you can come across. Can I get a witness? So I want to push you before I leave this world, before I leave this place. I see that. I want, to, I want you to pray so hard to God, take out the time and just ask God, God, allow me to feel your spirit, allow me to flow in your spirit. Now, I would believe that if you have a desire, a deep down desire to serve the Lord right now, the spirit is already working in your life. Can I get a witness? Amen. But I want, like Jesus said in John chapter 14, I want you to be in the spirit, in the spirit, in the spirit. And it's even deeper because the flesh and the spirit are at war with one another. Just like Satan, when he got kicked down out of heaven, he's at war with the mothers and the children, the fathers with the children. He don't want the children of men to be born again. Can I get a witness? So he's doing every diabolical. You know, have you ever heard, of, of course you have, that some people, when they get sick, they want everybody to get sick? When Tormo happens to with them, they want Tormo to happen with everybody? Come on, huh? Some people have sexually transmitted disease rather than tell people they just want to spread it all over. I'm dying, so you die. I'm sick, so you get sick. Don't just have to be sexually transmitted disease, but we can relate to that, right? Or any terminal disease. I got it, you get it. I got cancer, you get cancer. I, I'm blowing smoke. I'm putting smoke in my body and killing me. So, I'm, hey, so what? I'm blowing secondhand smoke all in the air. But we say we love one another. So that lets you know that the love of Satan is not really love at all. And do you know that how Satan is getting people, he's making people think that they're receiving a spirit of love, a spirit of revelation. It's a spirit of deception, ladies and gentlemen. It's deceiving. It's really hate covered in love. It's like poison. It's like somebody making a batch of poison and putting chocolate or whatever your favorite flavor is in it just so you'll eat it. That's what Satan does. So Satan comes and I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Any kind of way in the world, make you love the world, but it's all the propagated disaster. It's all the plan to keep you low. And you have to pray so hard. That's why Luke chapter 18 says the woman that prayed or went to the unjust judge and she kept up going to her, I need help. I'm not helping you today. I need help. I'm not helping you today. I need help. I'm not helping you today. Back again. I need help. I'm not helping you today. Finally, the man said, because she keep on bothering me, I'm going to help her. <laughs> Praise the Lord. She was persistent. And so in Luke chapter 18, it tells you to be persistent with God. You say, if you really don't know the spirit, you listen, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 maybe it's not for me. Maybe I got to close it another way. But let me tell you, the reason why I'm so consistent uh, or, or persistent with God, I received the Holy Ghost speaking. Somebody said, how do you know God is real? God did not fill me with the Holy Spirit. A wretched guy as myself, born and said, no matter how good I tried to be or whatever the case may be, still I was born in sin, shaping in iniquity. Still the same things that other people do, I'm vulnerable to do. Maybe I might have did less, but I'm still vulnerable. I'm still a human being. Praise the Lord. So I praise the Lord. I heard the voice of Jesus, uh, the gospel sound. Some people tell you that I heard the voice of God like this, I, like you hear my voice. I didn't hear God like that. But just the message has drawn me by its power. But I've met people that said they heard God's voice. And, and walked on, almost like they saying they walked on the water and received all types of gifts. And yet they still don't confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Something wrong somewhere. 
But yet the, the Holy Ghost that God's talking about, I received it. Come on. Huh? I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just trying to tell you something. So you need to convince yourself. You need something to let you know that even in the time, listen, when Satan comes at me, when Satan comes at me, when Satan comes at me as strong as he comes, I have to remember God filled you. This, this book that you knew nothing of that was 3,000 old before you even got into the world. Just like math. I didn't know one and one was two. Somebody had to teach me. But when they told me about Jesus, I had the opportunity either to accept it or reject it. It wasn't like one and one and two. You have to go one and one and two. Is that right? You have to say A, B, C, D, E, F, G. That, that's part of, of the curriculum. Is that right? But they didn't tell me that I had to believe in Jesus. They gave me the option. They said, now, there's a story here about heaven and hell. I've been led to shed. You do what you want with it. It's become a part of my life. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? And because it's become a part of my life, it's so much a part of my life that it is life. Because if Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, it's like money. If I had money, I wanted everybody to eat. And I'm kind of stingy. You know why I'm stingy, though? Because I don't have much to share. Praise the Lord. And I know it's going to be hard to get back what you put out. Praise the Lord. But I would love just to go in my pockets and just give it. I, that's how I really am that way. But I'm not stupid either. Because once you give out, if you're not working or doing something, even if you do, you have to put it back because you still have things you have to do. So you have to be careful. So I'm frugal. Try to be wise with how I do with what I do. But I would love for everybody to have it. So now I've come across this Jesus. I would really believe it. So I'm doing like somebody did to me. I'm sharing with you because this is life everlasting. And if we can get in the connection with God, you might can go further than I can go. You might be able to help me. Maybe if I push you, you ever have a, a vision? I heard people say they had a vision and they shared it with somebody and they took the vision. They just ran with it, right? Don't feel bad because if it was for you, what's for you? I just believe what's for you is for you. Now, some people now, they say, don't tell nobody your dreams. Don't tell nobody that. That could be. I don't know. I just want to believe that if God is the power that he is, whatever is for you is for you. And if Satan steals something, or not even Satan, if somebody else takes something from you, even if you look at it, don't look, it's God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's hope if they were godly, that even if they ran with a vision or, or information that you gave them, that they would come back and bless you. Now, some people don't do that. So then you would contribute that to uh, what well, Satan was in that. But it's okay. It's, on, it's okay. Because you know why? You help them. So you may not look at it like that, but you help them because they wouldn't have been nowhere if even though they may not give you no credit at all. But if you hadn't told them, they wouldn't have the information. And so that's how some people are with the gospel. Watch this. Some people, even in their own family, they don't talk about the gospel because it causes up too, they say it causes up confusion. But if you really believe that it's like the lotto, more than the lotto, right? You don't want your family to go to heaven. You don't have to be a preacher. It's just the love. We talk about love. We talk about loving, sitting down, playing cards, love, playing dominoes or whatever we do, biz wick. I don't know these things. Just in my scrabble, whatever, right? We do these things out of love, right? So why can't I talk to you about Jesus out of love? Because we all have been born to live, to die, to be judged. And I don't want the burden that if you die before I do, that I think that you went to hell. And especially with the blood on my hand that I never opened my mouth. Y'all didn't hear me. You, you, oh, you heard me, but you don't know the weight of what I just said. Can you imagine the weight? Do you, you don't imagine the weight that can come over you if somebody or people that you care about die and you think, you don't know, but if you think that they went to hell. And you didn't do anything. Now, I read in the book of Corinthians, I believe it's in Corinthians, 
Because, you know, we got people that think we can do what we want. We gamble with God. Think, well, God don't really mean what he say. Um, he's such a loving God. You can do this and you can do that. No, you got to be at least a practicing person trying to serve the Lord. Okay, if you bound by something, because we can point the finger all day, da, 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 you did this, you did that. And no matter how much you try to be in Christ, you still going to be in error some way, most likely. Okay? So some people will call you a hypocrite. That's not a hypocrite. That's weakness. Hypocrite is if you pretending that you're better than what you are. There's a difference. And we so fast to call people hypocrite because that's what we've been taught. We're not together. We're not loving. We're not really united. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when you learn right perspective, when you learn love and real connection, you learn that sister is weak. That brother is weak. Do you understand what I'm saying? No matter who they are. They're weak and they need our strength and you need their strength and we need each other's strength because we all get weak. But the love of God should want you to push a person, not out of gossip, but out of the gospel. I motivate you. I want you to do the best you can. I understand your weakness, but let's try. Let's pray. Let's try to get closer to God because you can get to an area of God where it's like you can walk through the wall. Did you hear what I just said? We're not talking no, it's going to sound spooky, supernatural television. No, listen, you can do almost anything in God. When he said move mountain, that's what he was talking about. But most of us have not pushed ourselves or haven't tried, at least tried. Do you understand what I'm saying? At least try. At least try. Wouldn't you rather it be on the record if God is keeping a record, like Revelation chapter 20 said, the books will be open. So if God is looking at everything, if he's keeping a record, everything we've done, good, bad, sad, thought, wouldn't you want it on record that you tried as many times as possible? So now you can understand why Luke chapter 18 said, men ought to always pray. Why first... Thessalonians 5, 17 said, amen, uh, pray without ceasing. Are right, you ready, brother? All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. Spent the night praying to God. All right. Jesus spent the night praying to God. Now, I don't know if you ever tried this. I remember when my godmother was a little bit younger, and I used to go by a place where she was doing uh, nursing work. Lord God, she would pray all night. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if you ever had an opportunity to try to pray, and you know, because you heard it, but you didn't never do it, like people stay in uh, what they call uh, shut-ins and stuff like that, I've tried. People do it. They do it. Lord God, Lord God. I heard, even like I heard one preacher say, he wait for his grandmother to stop praying. He said, and he go in there, and she, he go in and she fall asleep, and if he go in there and wake up, she start praying again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? But it takes prayer to talk to God. God know your flesh is weak, but at least you trying. Thank God for the, the praying grandmothers. It hurts my heart sometimes when I think about some of us that didn't have praying grandmothers and grandfathers or mothers and fathers, the leaders of God. But then when you hear the stories about people who are successful and they, have, they talk about their praying grandfathers and grandmothers and praying mothers and praying fathers, that's a beautiful thing. Hallelujah. But God bless the ones who didn't have the ones to pray him through that somebody else might have saw him out the window and said, I pray for that young lady. I pray for that young man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A stranger just passing through the street. Have you ever just prayed for somebody because God led you to pray because he said we ought to pray for one another and you don't know the person. You don't know the people. You just pray. Have you ever just prayed for the world just because God led you to pray for him because we all need to be saved. And everybody needs prayer. The worst person needs prayer. How they ever going to be delivered if nobody don't pray? Or if God don't have mercy on them? God can save them without us. But I'm talking about using us. We got to see God. We have to believe God. And if God is in us as faith, the idea if he can change me, he can change you. If he can change you, he can change them. If he can change them, he can change everybody. If he... But are we going to pray? So Jesus prayed. Go ahead, brother. The morning came, he also, this is the morning came, he called his disciples mm -hmm. to him and, and chose 12. All right, now, this is where, again, he chose the 12 disciples. Again, it's like almost like Matthew 10. Go ahead. 
right. who he also designated apostles. All right, now he also gave them the apostleship, the overseership in their spirit. Go ahead. It's not, this wasn't a men, because now you got to understand something. Real preachers called of God. Look at these brothers that Jesus called. Now, didn't they just got finished talking about Jesus? Now, Jesus was sent from God, right? So he's the man. Now, he's calling men. So if they didn't accept Jesus, do you think they're going to accept these preachers that Jesus sent? No. And that's the same thing that's going on in the world. What has happened, the world, the Pharisees, the scribes, the so-called intelligent, intelligent has set up a church just like they set up a school system. And they are. Look at us. You, you, do you understand what I'm saying? They, they, it's a smoke screen to blind many people when we talk about the Antichrist. Antichrist can only imitate Christ by knowing Christ. So they know something about Christ. Y'all walking with me? They know something about Christ. That's how they get you. And they know you don't know. So the more philosophical they talk, the more intelligent they talk, you're like, woo. Because some people only like you if you're a doctor. You got some people like that. You can't be, you can't be no ghetto preacher. Praise the Lord. You got to be a magna cum laude. You understand what I'm saying? You have to be Yale and Harvard. You know what I mean? Uh, Tuskegee. You know what I mean? You have to graduate from the great university of, of theological seminary, be MD, Dr. So so. Then they listen to you. And you might be the biggest Satanist in the world. Not knocking education. Because education is learning, period. Period. Not just going to a facility, but learning is to be educated. Is that right? To learn is to be educated. But who's teaching? Go ahead, um, brother. That Simon, who he named Peter. Simon, whom he named Peter. His brother Andrew. His brother Andrew. James. James. Uh, All right, he's going through the 12 that he's called. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, Bartholomew, Bartholomew, Philip, Matthew, Matthew, Thomas, Thomas, James, James, son of Ephesus, son of who? I think I know it was Ephesus. Ephesus. Okay, Ephesus. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Simon, who was called the Zealot. All right, Simon the Zealot. All right, Judas, son of James. Judas and Judas. Um, Oscar. And Judas is a carrier. It's a carrier. Who became a traitor? All right, and also Judas, the one that was called the traitor. Even when the Lord calls somebody, no, ma no matter how close somebody is, they can be a stabber in the back. Judas sat right at the table with him and stabbed him right in the back. Learned him, knew him, ate with him, drank with him, had every opportunity to go where Jesus went and learn with Jesus. Jesus still treated him not, but yet he still betrayed Jesus. For the world, we don't want to do that, beloved. We don't want to do that because what shall it profit? Us to gain the world and lose a soul. Going back, Matthew chapter 4, Satan came right to Jesus, took him on high. If you worship me, and that's what he's doing with us. And some people, some of us, when I say us, I'm talking about not necessarily us, but us, but even people, right? They sell out for cheap. People pointing at the, the music industry and the movie stars talking about they Illuminati and they selling out to the devil. Number one, they overkilling the word Illuminati because God said let there be light. So God is illuminate because illuminate means to bring into the light. So is God satanic? No. Jesus said he was the light of the world. So he's an Illuminati. Okay. He said we are the light of the world if we uh, do what he tells us to do. So we Illuminati. So, there's, so what they should be saying, Satan Illuminati. Versus God Illuminati. You understand what I'm saying? They just say Illuminati. And usually people that say Illuminati, they don't, they don't care whether they're serving Satan or not. They only care because they're making money and they're jealous. So they just down in it. You ever notice people, they, they see, they, they act that they, uh, they, it's an old saying that older people say, you call them something, uh, call them something clean. Hold it. You call, you're doing something dirty and trying to call it clean. You understand what I'm saying? Doing something dirty, trying to call it clean. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know what I'm mean? saying? Same thing all goes in like a wolves in sheep clothes. In other words, you're all pretentious. You don't mean what you really say. You're not really mad with them because of the fact that they're serving Satan. You don't even care. You only care because they have money, and you don't. But yet some of the people that are pointing finger are 
lost on the low level and they sold their soul to the devil. And don't even know it. Don't even know it. Like the rapper said, and you don't even know it. Don't even know it. Serving Satan and don't even know it. And pointing at other people serving Satan. Satan's kingdom divided. So you got the Satanists up here, Satan is here, and the Satan is down here. Trying to mad with them up there. Do you understand what I'm saying? But in, in God, he's telling us we don't have to be jealous of nobody. Nobody. Because whatever you need, God got. And guess what? You know what I came across? It took me a while to see it. Beloved brothers and sisters, some things God don't want you in because you don't know what's behind it. A lot of you right here are professional people. Some of you can sing and do things better than some of the other people that do it. But you know why you haven't gotten there? Because if you had gotten there, you would have been right in Satan's hand and you wouldn't have made it. And you ain't never thought about it. And God just showed me just a clear. Sometimes, you, you know, when, when I, I remember when I first started preaching, you know, I wanted my name in light. I honestly tell you, honestly, God, I wanted my name in light. I wanted my name in light. I wanted to be the baddest, the best. I still want to be the baddest and best, but I don't, but, it, but the Lord showed me the light is being in the light of Jesus, not in the light of Hollywood, not in the light of the world with the world like it. Because if the world is liking you, then something wrong. Something wrong. You understand what I'm saying? Because you're supposed to be drawn to the world. You're the world's enemy. You, watch this. You're the world's friend, but you're the world's enemy. Because when you're telling the world to come out from where they're coming from, you're not going to be their friend until they recognize that you that they are wrong. If they Or accept the wrong. Because if they know they're wrong, but they don't want to come out of their wrong, come on now. You're their enemy. So if they pat you on the head, you just want to be worldwide reverend, worldwide elder, worldwide pastor, worldwide apostle with the world. What we want to be, BT preachers. I'm not knocking. I'm just talking about me. What God showed me. Because I wanted it. I wanted it. I wanted to be a, I wanted my name in life. That's what I actually, I'm telling you, I actually said, I want my name in life. I actually said, I want my name in life. Hiya, Sanda! Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Until God came to me and said, I am the light. I didn't hear no audible voice. It said, my spirit. Hiya! He said, I am the light. I am the light. I am the light. What's better than going to heaven? I am the light. But I'm like, Lord, but there's so much trial and so much tribulation, so much pain. But he said, in me, you will overcome the world. I don't like it. I don't like it. But on another part of me, I love it. My flesh don't like it. But I love the Lord. And I just pray that the Lord brings me through. And that's what's happening with some of you. Your flesh don't like it. Your flesh not supposed to like it. Your flesh not higher. Your flesh not supposed to like it because your flesh is contrary to the spirit. That's why you got to keep on praying to get in the spirit and asking God to strengthen your spirit. Can I get a witness here? You need the spirit of God. You can't be holy by yourself. You can't be righteous by yourself. Amen. Because you're going to keep on slipping and keep on for I don't care about what nobody else saying pay attention to what I'm saying amen but in the Lord he will perfect you can I get a witness he will perfect you God will make you what you're supposed to be even when the Lord comes he's coming to, to to finish the work that he done in you can I get a witness right now you just going on amen by faith but soon the mortal gonna put on immortality the corrupt will put on incorruption, but you got to hold on by faith. So, see, some we get confused about, well, and you, you say we got to do some things. We got to work. Yeah, you're not working to get saved. You're working because the Savior has did a work for you. I and mean, if you believe it, you change your partner. So your work is not considered work because you can never do nothing to save yourself. But you do the works because you're supposed to represent the one that represents you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You got to, you know what I'm saying? You can do all the works you want and never save yourself. Some folk never lie, but they won't go to heaven because of that. They, go, they won't go to heaven because they didn't accept Jesus. Because you was born in sin, shaping in iniquity. So the homosexual, the liar, the gambler, the rapist, the, the, the worst of the worst, they not just going to hell for that. They go to hell because they didn't come to Jesus who would have cleaned them up from that. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? He didn't come to Jesus who would have cleaned them up from that. 
Then some have a lying spirit and say, oh, I came to Jesus and he told me I can stay like this. No, the book teaches, know you not, that the ungodly shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Can I get a witness? That's in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. So that means you've got to change, at least practice changing. What's the difference between a sinner and a saint? The practice. The sinner practices sin. The saint practices living for God. Because you want to have it on record, God, that I, I believe you. That you sent your only begotten son. That you was sitting on high. And you're looking down low. And you see me. You see the world. You saw me even before I was in my father's bosom, in my mother's womb. You saw me before I was even uh, playing in my father's mind and in my mother's mind. Whether on purpose or by accident, you saw me. Amen. Before I even got here, you already sent the plan of salvation. Amen. And you sent Jesus for yourself. For you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever believe on you should not friend. So though I wasn't here, when I got here, the same opportunity that was there for those that were already here is the same opportunity for me. Lord God Almighty. And now, Lord, I hear the message. And I want whatever you have for me. And you told me, amen, to come to you. And if I come to you, you will no wise cast me out. So what does Satan try to do? Satan try to pull you away or give you, if he know that you're smart, if he know that you're intelligent, if he know that you're trying to go, he'll try to come at you some other way, intelligent way. Well, come to God this way. Do it like this. He just don't want you to put Jesus up front because Jesus is your Savior. He don't mind if you be religious. We're all religious. Even the atheist religious. Somebody say, how? I'm not religious. You ever hear people say, I'm not religious. The definition of religion is a systematic way of doing things. So if you were living, you're religious. You can't help but be religious because you're going to do something systematically. Something. Because your mind is set a certain way. So that's religion. Do you understand what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be God. So just like when we talk about this, we should say godly religion. You understand what I'm saying? In the, in the, in the realm of godly religion. Because everybody has a mindset. Whether it's for God or against God. So here we are. Satan is trying to beat us down, trying to beat us down. But he tried to beat Jesus down. This is what the book is about, right? But he called these 12. Now let's go on in a little bit further than that. So I can go a little further. Go ahead. Go past after he called all the 12 disciples. All right, 17. 17. Uh, in the book of Luke, yes. the sixth chapter and the 17th verse. Well, he went down with them and stood on a large place. All right, Jesus. A level place. Huh? Jesus went and stood on a level place. All right. A large crowd of his disciples was there. All right. And a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem. All right. And from the coast of Tyre mm -hmm. and Sidon, uh -huh. who had came to hear and to be healed of their disease. All right. A lot of people came around Jesus to hear from him and to be healed of their disease. Right. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Those troubled by evil spirits. People spirits. that's troubled by evil spirits. And letting you know right now, if you can be honest with yourself, if the devil's tormenting you, you can come to Jesus and you can get delivered from whatever it is. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm a believer that Jesus still casts out devils. Jesus still heals. He still delivers. Come on. He don't just save. It's not just a, a faith thing. He actually heals. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Go ahead. Trouble by evil spirits of fear, and the people all try to torture him. Try to touch him. Try to touch him. All right, many people was trying to touch Jesus because of the fact they all wanted to be healed. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Because power was coming from him and healing them all. All right, power was coming from him. Remember even the woman with the issue of blood? Mm -hmm. How she just said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. He don't even have to talk to me. If I could just touch the hem of his garment. I know I'll be held, be a made whole. And then when she touched him, the Bible said he asked, who touched me? Because virtue left out of my body. Praise the Lord. Because she was healed instantly. And she had went to doctor after doctor. She had delivered for 12 years. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, brother. 20. Look at his disciples and say, blessed are you who are poor. Uh-oh, stop right there. So this is, when the message of Jesus is primarily to the poor. Okay, because the poor, you feel like you don't have nothing. 
You understand what I'm saying? You feel like you have nothing. And even my mind jumps to the 16th chapter, Luke, where it talks about the rich man and the poor man. And a lot of us, we put a lot of time, and it's understandable, about trying to be uh, financially secure. And that's just common sense. But I'm taking you beyond. My, my job, I'm not messing with the common sense. I understand you. I'm not telling nobody, amen, not to do what's common. But what I am going to tell you as a spiritual man of God, amen, seek the law more. Seek the Lord more. For what shall it profit a person to gain the whole world? And, and it keeps on coming. You can't have how many masters? You can't serve two. You can have them, but you can't serve but one. Because you're going you're gonna to be faithful to one and unfaithful to the other. Whichever one it is. All right, go ahead, brother. Read. Mm -hmm. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Stop right there. Blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. You're blessed. 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 Somebody say blessed. Blessed. Say it louder. Blessed. blessed. You got to tell yourself in Jesus, say in Jesus, in Jesus. I'm blessed. Regardless of what you don't have, if you have Jesus, number one, you're only here for a limited time, brothers and sisters. Come on, I understand y'all. I, like I like the best too. I, I got, I often tell you I got holes in my pocket, but when I go shopping, I got expensive things. Didn't even know I had expensive things, but I like expensive stuff. Praise the Lord. Can't afford none of them, but I like it. Praise the Lord. But praise the Lord. If we get a chance, we're going to a place where everything's going to be all right. Go ahead. I'm, I'm trying not to close, but every time I start talking, I get ready to close. Go ahead. Blessed are you who are hungry. Blessed are you that are hungry. Now, for you will be satisfied. For you shall be satisfied. You might be hungry now, but don't be hungry just for the things of the world. Try to be hungry for God. Because if you get hungry for God, he's going to, he said these other things he'll give you, but that's not where he wants your mind at. Even with Solomon in the Old Testament, when Solomon prayed, he said, God, I want to know how to teach the people, how to lead the people. He said, because you didn't ask for material things, I gave them to you. So if you, I mean, see, see, the devil can play on our mind or we can play on our own mind. So, well, let me ask God for spiritual things so he'll give me natural things. No, but it got to be in your heart. You can't, so you can't play God. I can't play God. You understand? Because God can see my heart. So I can say, God, oh, I just want to tell the people the right thing. But in my mind, I want, I want Rolls Royces and Bentleys. You understand what I'm saying? Do you feel what I'm saying? But God knows. You can't fool God. You know what I mean? So God just help me. Help me, God. In the in the Help me, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Y'all excuse me. Go ahead. All right. Blessed are you who weep. Now, for you will laugh. You're weeping now. You're having problems right now. But if you stay with Jesus, he said, you'll be blessed. You're crying right now. But he will wipe away the tears from your eyes. Can I get a witness? Go ahead. Blessed are you when men hate you. He, hold it. Not that they're going to love you, but they will, what? Hate you. And when somebody hates you, anything can come out of hatred. Do y'all understand? anything bad. Nothing good comes out of hatred. Am I right? They don't have anything good intended for you when they hate you. Even if they don't do anything to you, they don't have anything that they have. They don't, their prayers, their motivation for you is all negative. They, they want you to die or anything. Anything bad. As long as it's hateful. Can I get a witness? Mm -hmm. All right. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Now, go ahead, brother. Thank you. Blessed are you when men hate you, when they exclude you and insult you. When they, when they, when they what? When they exclude. And when they exclude you, E X C L U D E. Mm -hmm. All right, when they exclude you, that means they don't want you part of their stuff. You know, some people, I've been there with. Oh, nobody don't want me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you know what? After you mature, I mean, come on, we we get lonely. The Christian life can be a lonely life. Mm -hmm. But guess what? When you see some of the things that they, when you, if, you, if God opened up your eyes, and see, that's what we need to do. See, we don't, see, in the flesh, the flesh gets fed on flesh. But if you're in the spirit, the spirit gets fed on the spirit. You know what I mean? But when God can show you the how, you don't need this. You don't need this. Praise the Lord. You don't need this. I'll look. Then when you look in, uh, go ahead, just go ahead, brother. And it's so deep and you just remain as you. They insult you. 
and reject your name and treat you as you're evil. You're the evil one. You you trying to do for the Lord. You telling them what the Lord said. They, didn't they treat the Lord like that? What did he do to them wrong? Some people hate you right now. People are killing people, want to kill people just for something that they say. I'm going to kill you for what you say. I'm going to, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Because of the Son of Man. Because of the Son of Man. Now, we, you know what I mean? Now, if they're doing it in the world like that, now, even when you're doing something right, talking about the Word of God and representing the Son of Man, the people that's representing the Son of Satan, right? The Satan's son, Satan's daughters, they don't want to hear nothing about no Jesus. It takes the power of God to change their mind. Go ahead. Rejoice. Rejoice. Oh, did it tell us to be that we blessed? And did it tell us to rejoice? How can that be possible? The only way that it can be possible, sisters and brothers, is by coming to Jesus, asking him, Lord, save me. Lord, deliver me. Lord, take me higher. Can I get a witness? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Rejoice in that day and be for joy. Because mm -hmm. great is your reward in heaven. But that is how their father treated the prophet. All right, he said, now, now like that's supposed to be make you feel better. But it does supposed to make you feel better because what Jesus is telling you, seek me, get in God, and recognize that what you're going through, this has already been going on. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Go ahead, brother. 24. Behold mm -hmm. you who are rich, mm -hmm. for you have already received your comfort. Stop right there. Hold it here. If he, it sounds like if he's saying if you already received, you're not going to receive nothing else. You got yours right here. Read over that. Yep. So hope is a woe to you who are rich. Woe to you that are rich. Go ahead. But you have already received your comfort. Oh, you have already received your comfort. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Woe to you who are well fed now. Stop right there. Woe to you that are well fed now. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. For you will go hungry. For you will go home. Remember the other week I said the first shall be last, yeah, last one. And I'm, I wasn't like I was like, well, did I really teach you all right? Like, but let's. It's, I hear the same thing in this right here. Mm -hmm. The first shall be last, yeah. and the last shall be first. And then what? Everybody gets a turn. Yeah. Oh, you you eat now. Yeah. Be very careful yeah. how you treat people. Yeah. Now I'm not talking about people that's eating with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Talking about people that's eating without the Lord. I don't need the Lord. Look at me. Look what I got. Oh man, things can change. Mm -hmm. Things can change. Yes, can. Things can go ahead. Go ahead. Woe to you who laugh now. And woe to you that's laughing now. Because you will mourn and weep. Because you were going to mourn and weep. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Woe to you when all men speak wrong of you. Hold it. Watch it. And remember what I said? Say, I want my name in lights. Mm -hmm. Woe mm -hmm. when men speak well of you. Go ahead. For that is how their father treated the poor father. That's how their mm -hmm. fathers treated the poor father. Because they want you to say what you see. In order for you to be in the line, like right. to be a star the way you want to be, you got to say what the world wants you to say. Because if you don't, oh, no, y'all see, y'all see, I'm a high, y'all help me, look. That see y'all don't y'all don't understand you you may understand but you don't really understand but I hope you can I, I'm making you understand. Listen, when you get into certain things, I'm like, why you don't do this? It's not that some people haven't tried, but when you get in, you got to it, it, on different levels. You got to sell your soul. And nobody don't come to you and say, hey, you got to sell your soul. But you know what you have to do when you involve in certain things. You know the compromise. There, yeah, that's the word. It's not selling your soul. They don't say sell your soul, but the compromise is right there. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? You got to compromise. So some things you got to turn back around from. Some things you got to give up. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It seems good, but you got, if God allow you to see the inside, you say, once I step into this, this is a part, this is going to be a program now. And a program don't just end. Praise the Lord. Once you start on a, on a, on a, a methodology, the method don't stop. That means the method keeps on going. Is that right? So you some things you got to turn down. Come on, oh, see, I saw. Help me, Lord. And if you'll see, Haya, help me, Lord. Haya, help me, God, help me. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But I tell you who hear me. Jesus said, hold it right there. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And this is another reason why we got to pray so hard. How can you love your enemy, Jesus? You've got to get in the spirit of God. Your flesh is not going to love your enemy. Your flesh ain't going to love you. Praise the Lord. 
But when you come to God in the name of Abashita, in the name of Shia, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus, help these thine people move by your spirit, God, in the name of Yeshia, in the name of Ishia, Kabashia, help God, help somebody, help somebody here, help all of them here, even the listeners, God, in the name of Yana, oh God, Shia Tashanda, oh my, Yeshia Taya, oh God, help, have Mama, Ishiti, Sanda, Oh, the way that on the Yasaya, glory, God, help me, God, help somebody in the Yana Saya. Oh, God, help in the name of Jesus. Go ahead, brother, go ahead, go ahead. You can't do it without God. We can't do it without God, brothers and sisters. You got it. You don't know how many times, and I probably don't know how many times you cry, but keep on crying in the name of Jesus. Keep on talking in the Rashiya, in the name of Jesus. People will talk about you like a dog. They don't understand you, but hallelujah. One of these days, hallelujah, Rashiya is going to be all over. Come on. But hallelujah, But until that day is over, you keep on calling on the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Your salvation is more than anything in this world. It's more than your house. It's more than your car. It's more than your money. It's more than this and that. Your relationship with God is more than everything because you want to make it to heaven. Nobody wants to be damned. Can I get a witness? Hallelujah. Help ye one another. Help one another. Help your lover. Help your friend. And help your family, hallelujah, Moshe, to go to heaven, hallelujah, motivate them, it's going to be hard, it's easy to talk about anything else but God, but when Jesus comes, hallelujah, when Jesus, Satan's power will be broken, can I get a witness, hallelujah, you got to call on him, so he's kind of Moshe, until you feel him in your hands, feel him in your mind, amen, that he comes through your eyes, comes through your ears, comes through your mouth, be in your heart, can I get a witness, hallelujah, you got to believe him, trust him, can I get the invisible has to become visible. Go ahead, brother. Read for me. Hallelujah. Bless those who curse you. Bless them. Bless them. It's going to be hard. Your, your flesh mouth might want to. No, you a mother. <laughs> I'm just using an example. Huh? No, but but your spirit is saying repent. Repent. That's not the way to do it. Your flesh will fight back. But just because you fought back in the flesh, your spirit will say, repent, yeah. and then you'll still pray for the same person you fought with, same person you cursed at. You say, but they did it to me. Yeah, but we but we, we, we pushing for perfection. We pushing for a different heart. Yeah. And, and it ain't this. It's yeah. this. Mm -hmm. This. Hallelujah. And when this changed all, hallelujah, the blood change. Can I, we, cause we, we, we working on a blood transfusion. Can I get a witness? Uh -huh. A mind transfusion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, what they call it, uh, when, when, when people, uh, have some certain, they, uh, they have to take all the blood out. What they call that? Yeah, but it's a, it's a, it's a scientist, what nurses, when you take all the blood out your body, the blood trans, what they call that? Yeah, but it's, it's something else. All right, but anyway, okay. We got the hand. Yeah. That's what God is doing. Though. Cleaning our blood out. Mm -hmm. Cleaning our blood out. Mm -hmm. Cleaning our blood out. And we're going to go through. We're going to go through. We're going to say some of the wrong thing or repent. Hold on. Then folks folk with the devil will say, yeah, you think all you can do is just repent. I better repent. You know, I can't listen to you. Because if I listen to you, then I won't repent. So what, I'm just going to let all this... Glogs stay up in me. When you got cold, then you need to get the cold out. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Even though it don't look right. <laughs> got to come out. Praise the Lord. Hey, you can try to be as dignified as you can, but it got to come out. Is that right? Yeah. Amen. Sin got to come out. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And now I don't want it to come out the wrong way. I want it to come out the right way. So since we know it's going to come out the wrong way, now I want it to come out the right way. Hallelujah. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. So I'm going to stay with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Talk about me. Uh, let me close this up. Talk about me as much as you please. Mm -hmm. Huh? But I'm going to get down on my knees. Can I get a witness? Yeah. I'm going to keep on calling yeah. on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. I want you to touch your neighbor and say, I'm going to keep on calling on Jesus. Uh, yeah. Amen. Oh, keep, so, Jesus. Amen. Touch him again and say, I'm going to keep on calling on the name of Jesus. Uh, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to keep on calling. Uh, I'm glad. 
that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I want life. Is there anybody that want life? Wave your hand. I want life. So I'm going to keep on calling on Jesus. They can call me mad. They can call me crazy. They done said it anyhow. So let me call on the name of Jesus. Can I get a witness? Jesus, thou son of God. Amen. Save my soul. Take me higher. Lead me and guide me. Can I get a witness? My God, my God. I need you like I never needed you before. I lift my hands and I say, Lord, have mercy on my soul. In the name of Jesus. I need you like I never needed you before. Satan is on my track trying to turn me back. But you told me that you never leave me and you never forsake me. The Lord God Almighty send the comforter in the name of Jesus. Send the Holy Ghost. Ah, my, my God. Hallelujah. I'm about to close now, but I want you to hold on. You might go through. You might cry sometime, but down, even in the valley of despair, be like uh, David said in the 23rd Psalm. He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. My enemies are all around me. My enemies want to destroy me, but God is on my side. God is on your side. All you got to do is call on the name of Jesus and mean it from your heart. Now, there's some liars. There's some hypocrites. There's some phony people. But don't be phony about it. Just say, Lord, I need you. I really want the authenticness of your loving kindness. I want your power. I know that I'm dying. Amen. The more we step each second at the clock ticks, we're dying, ladies and gentlemen. But we're dying to live. I don't want to live in hell. I want to live in heaven. So I'm calling on his name. And I believe that the Bible says, if you go to Second Corinthians, chapter 1, it says he gives you the Holy Spirit of promise. That's why I tell you, seek ye the Lord and ask for the Holy Spirit. Don't let nobody come to you like they come to me and say, oh, you talking about speaking in tongues and you talking about this. Well, they spoke in tongues on the day of Pentecost. Remember in the Old Testament? They said in the book of Hosea, it said, and he shall pour his spirit out on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Then we go to the New Testament and Acts chapter 2, it fulfilled that. Remember in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy chapter 18, it said, and there shall arise a prophet, a prophet like unto Moses. And here comes Jesus in the New Testament. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 said, a virgin shall bring forth a son and he shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, it said, a son is given, a child is born, and they shall call him wonderful counselor, almighty God. Here is Jesus. Why are you holding on to the Old Testament and can't hold on to the New? Lord God Almighty. Amen. Hebrews chapter 8 and going on from Hebrews chapter 8 even in 7, 8 and 9, said there's a new covenant. Amen. The old only was presenting the new. The old was only setting the way for the new. The doves can't save you. The pigeons can't save you. The bullets, the sacrifices can't save you. Jesus gave his life that we can be saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 10. There's no other sacrifice. Mm -hmm. If we turn away from Jesus, we just, we might as well, like I tell people, if you're going to serve the devil, you might as well try to go in style. <laughs> you might as well try to go in style. Get everything the devil yeah, got there. Yeah. Don't, don't go for no don't little, go little bit. bit. Go, go for That's it. Right. Tell the devil, okay, you want me? I want everything you got. That's right. If I'm going to hell, then this is heaven right here. Then yeah. let me let me live heaven right here. That's right. I want the best car, the best house, the best everything. But I don't want nothing from the devil. Right. Nothing. Right. Nothing unless God told him to give it to me. Because if God told me it don't belong to him, belong to him. God, right. belong to me. Right. Praise the Lord. Is that right? Because right. what shall it profit a man to gain the world mm -hmm. and lose the soul? Oh, right. So I already know that I didn't see how many. U-Haul trucks do we see, or bank trucks do we see behind the hearse? All the time. I mean, None. Nothing. Just the hearse. Just the hearse. Is that right? Yeah. Nothing. And after we watch the people buried, if we go, if it's too far, we don't even go. Mm -hmm. Is that right? After they go That's in the right. grave, we gone. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. We gone. Sure. I didn't see nothing. And if it was, somebody probably go bury it, dig it out and it steal it. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and probably wouldn't even think they were stealing because they say, you dead. Yeah. Is that right? But the bottom line is my hope. Mm-hmm. Is built 
on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. I dare not trust mm -hmm. the sweetest frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, mm -hmm. the solid rock, mm -hmm. I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Somebody tell me, yeah. my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. I dare not trust. I dare not trust the sweetest rain. The sweetest rain. But holy lean on Jesus' name. But holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I say. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Hallelujah. All of the ground is sinking sand. Is sinking sand. Hallelujah. All of the ground is sinking sand. Somebody say, on Christ, on Christ the solid rock. The solid rock I stand. All of the ground. All of the ground. It's sinking sand on Christ, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. God bless you. Is everybody all right? Amen. Give your hand, yourself a hand clap. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Amen. We hope that this has been, amen, a blessing to your soul. And we hope to see you again. And those of you that have come far near, we thank you. Amen. Don't think that we don't appreciate you. We appreciate you. But we hope that you appreciate the God in me. Amen. To put the God in you. And hopefully that has been worth your time. In Jesus' name we pray. Let somebody say amen. Amen.